ready to come back yet. We'll have all the family back. I'm really, really looking forward to that. And um, praise God. Praise the Lord. And you know, next Sunday with us having that cake for uh, Molly graduating after the service, um, you know what? So many things have been taken away from our young people because of all of this. You know, Sunday school, and but just even school, graduation, all those things that we've missed. And so we're going to kind of make up for a little bit next Sunday. So uh, be sure and be here and honor uh, her. And also some of the ones, uh, they're not all here, but they're going to be going into junior high, high school. And so three of them, oh my gosh, they've all of a sudden, I remember when they were like born and all of a sudden now, we must be getting older. Amen. Good to see all of you today. Praise God. I'd like to share with you today about Arise, Shine, Even Now. Arise, Shine, Even Now. And I'd like for you to turn in your Bibles, if you would, to Isaiah 61. Excuse me, Isaiah 60. And we're going to look at verses 1 to 4. We're not doing anything on the uh, PowerPoint on the screen. I hope you brought your Bible or you have your smartphone with you. But I'm going to share with you today about Arise, Shine, Even Now. And at the end, we're going to be doing some prayer together, so don't slip out of here. I really believe when the body of Christ assembles, we are powerful. We are powerful when the church assembles to pray and to seek the faith of the Lord. And I'm so thankful this morning that we could corporately meet together and have communion. We haven't done that in three months. And I, I'm just so thankful that, Maria, thank you, that we could we could meet together and partake Amen. Go ahead. Give the Lord praise. We thank you. And I want to say this to you. When we have communion time, God releases things, whether you know it or not. There are things that heaven releases upon you as we release our heart, because that's the promise in the word of God. So when you go out of here, when you leave this service today, I believe that you're going to be stronger. You're going to be happier. You're going to be at more at peace. Because you were in the presence of God. We took the bread uh, and the cup together as his body. And there's all kinds of dynamics that happen uh, when we gather together. God releases things in our midst. And I'm just thankful. And again, Mike mentioned Tuesday uh, night, 7.30. It's amazing how many people have been tuning in. And sometimes we get 150 people uh, that have watched us. And even around the world we're hearing people were just watching just some of the things we're sharing as well as what's happening on Sunday morning. We're recording this video. We don't quite have it down yet for live, but uh, it's being recorded right now, the video. I've been looking, like you. I've been listening. I've been observing the events that have been going on in our nation, in our state, in Lake Elsinore. COVID-19, the high unemployment, tragedy in Minnesota, our nation, violence, looting, death, pain and misery, like a perfect storm, has hit America. And the thing that we've got to remember is we're not wrestling against flesh and blood. We've got to remember it is not the faces you see, whether it be on the screen or on the streets. There are things that the enemy is doing that are controlling people. And we need to remember that. And my question is, God, what are you saying to me personally? What is God saying to you? What is God saying to your family? What is God saying to our nation? What is God saying to... Elsinore, what is God saying to ECC? Well, I want to look at our text today, Isaiah 60, verses 1 to 4. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the people. But the Lord will arise over you, and his glory will be seen upon you. The Gentiles shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. In context, God is speaking to Israel as a nation 
but he's also speaking to Gentiles. If you read that whole chapter of Isaiah 60, but I believe it's speaking, and you need to hear this prophetically to you today. Yes, you. God is speaking to you today prophetically this word. To the Gentiles and to the believers. Yes, Israel, but to the Gentiles and believers. And he says, arise. Get up. Stand up. Don't lay down. And it's a, a word that requires attention and action. I believe spiritually God is saying to all of us, I want you to arise. You've been laying down or you've been maybe in your cave. But I believe God by the Holy Spirit has got a giant megaphone to his mouth and he's saying to his church and he's saying to you, I want you to arise. I want you to get up. I, don't, I want to get you from laying down. I want to get your attention. I want you to arise where you have been. Where have we been for the last three months? Don't get near me. Where's my hand sanitizer? I'm sorry. I believe that season is coming to an end. And I will not be controlled by fear. Or I will not be controlled by hate. He says, arise, shine. For your light has come. I want to say this to you. And you need to accept this by faith. The light is already here. The glory of God is already here. God is just wanting you to know, to believe it, that the glory of God's presence is already here. What are you talking about in this building? No, I'm talking about your life. I'm talking about the church of Jesus Christ. I'm talking about the state of California and America. I believe that God is saying, in the midst of everything that's going on, because, listen, I have to see this not only from a command from the Lord, but I have to see this with faith. If I don't walk my walk by, by faith, I'm going to be subject to every roller coaster emotion that every media thing that someone tells me. I have to walk by faith and you have to walk by faith. So get up. Get up from where you've been spiritually. Arise, shine, because the light has come. It's already arisen upon you. And I just need to say, Lord, I just want to be aware of the light and the glory that you have upon my life. We need to make this personal. His light is on you. And that word glory, and it says the glory of the Lord is risen. Already happened. It's already risen upon you. That word glory, what does the word glory mean? It means the weight of God. I want His presence. Jesus, I can't do nothing without Your presence and Your promises. His weight is upon your life, whether you know it or not or feel it, but we're not going by feeling. The word glory means weight. It means splendor. It means also honor. God has His weight. He has His splendor. And He has shined His honor upon you today. Glory. Say that word with me. Glory. God's glory is upon your life today. He says there, He said, Behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and deep darkness the people. Do we need any explanation of what we're seeing? The darkness it's over the, it's over the earth and deep darkness the people. But look what it says there again. And the, but the Lord, but the Lord will arise over you. I'm rising over you. No matter how dark things get. No matter how much they march. No matter who's hating. Whoever's burning. Who's ever masking, separating himself, hiding, whatever. We've got some folks in our church that say, I'm just not ready to come back. God bless you. Lord, put the Holy Spirit upon their life. And all those that are being cautious that the glory will visit people in their homes. I want to challenge you in your neighborhood when you drive by or walk by. 
God, I'm expecting the glory to hit that, that home. I'm expecting your glory that's going to hit that home of who you are. We're not going to do church. The church can't go back the way things were before. Church is not going to be the same because I believe the light and the glory is already beginning to come like billows of waves. Do you believe that with me? Do you believe that for the body of Christ? It's already here. His light is upon you. The darkness shall cover the earth and deep darkness the people. God doesn't do darkness. The enemy does darkness. Deep darkness to people. People caught in what sin does. Hear these words that I'm saying. We don't have a skin problem. We have a sin problem. And we need to be sensitive during this time, but I'm telling you, it's a sin problem. Not a skin problem. It's about the sin in the human heart. But God says, I'm going to arise over you. And I want to say that again. The Holy Spirit's anointing favor upon your life. And I want you to pray and believe for the glory and ask for it. I'm believing God is just looking for some people that he can do some divine interruption. You know what I mean about divine interruption? That he can interrupt your life with something you didn't plan on? So because I want to speak through you, I want to use you, I want you to pray, I, I just want to use you because I'm interrupting your schedule. God is saying, I interrupt your life with this announcement that I'm bringing something into your life so I can use you to be an agent of healing and blessing, and hear this, deliverance. There are so many people that need deliverance. People don't have problems, they have sin. you got to see that. So we have been anointed with favor, we've been, anointing with his, we've been anointed with His love, and we have been anointed with the glory of God. And I want to tell you today, ask for it. It's there. His glory is going to arise over you. Ask for the anointing that God, that I am so aware of the tangible presence of God that I'm walking by faith. That God, we're saying, God, I'm open for the interruptions today. Look what it says in verse 3. The Gentiles shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. The Gentiles, the heathen, shall come. It's talking about Israel, but I want to tell you, my brothers and sisters, I believe there are people that are going to be drawn to the church, to, the, to you, to your life, because of the light that's inside of you. Arise, shine, for thy light has come. Can I just talk to you for a minute? Can I just share with you? You may not know people from Adam. Carol and I, we went back to Chili's not this week, but last week. And you would have thought, that when the waitress saw us that knows us very well, that we were her lost cousins. She come running over with her mask and everything else, and she said, I know I can't hug you. Oh, I just want to hug you. She finally came over to Carol and sat down and said, I'm going to hug you anyway. I think there's something that this person was seeing that's more than just because she liked Jim and Carol and what we tip her good at Chili's. I think that she has missed us coming there a lot of times on Sunday because of the anointing and the love and watching us pray and watching how we treat her and we treat others. This is why building relationships with people because they see the glory. She said, man, I, I'm off on Sundays and I didn't think I was going to see you and here you are today. And we're just gone. What did we do? Folks, May you be so full of the light and the love that people miss your presence. So full of light and so full of love that people miss your presence. 
So we're going to go back. We may go back today. It's an exciting time to be alive. It's an exciting time to be alive. In the natural world, it's confusion and fear. But for, for the believer, this is an exciting time to be alive. Arise, shine, for thy light has come. Deep darkness is over the people, but the Lord has risen over you. Give me something practical. Pastor, with everything going on, turn in your Bibles to 1 John 2. We're going to look at a few verses today. This is the practicality of walking in the light. First John 2, verses 3 to 11. I'll give you a moment. And we're not going to get out of here in an hour, but is that okay? That wasn't, they didn't tell us we had to have an hour service. We thought, well, we'd try that, but no. When God's moving. 1 John 2, verses 3 to 11. By this we know, now by this we know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He who says, I know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, truly the love of God is perfected in him. By this we know that we are in him. He who says he abides in him ought to himself also to walk just as he walked. Brethren, I write no commandment to you, but an old commandment which you have had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which you have heard from the beginning. Again, a new commandment I write to you, which thing is true in him and in you, because the darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining. He who says he is in the light and hates his brother is in darkness unto now. He who loves his brother abides in the light, and there is no cause for stumbling in him. But he who hates his brother is in darkness and walks in darkness and does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. You say amen. The proof of knowing Jesus is that are we keeping the commandments of God? I hope that you're keeping the commandments of God because that's the proof that is the truth detector. The truth detector in your life is, are you keeping the commandments of God? Do you love the Lord where you are keeping His commandments? And He says, what's true, basically, and what's false here? Let me say, say this to you. Be careful what you listen to and what you believe because there's so much false that even Christians can get caught up with everything that is coded with emotion and logic rather than the truth that I just read to you. The truth is Jesus and His commandments. Someone said, as Pilate said, what is truth? The truth is embodied in God. And God has embodied the truth in Jesus. So everything goes back to Jesus. The truth is in Jesus. His commandments are His truth. I pray that you are crying out to God, God, show me what's false and what's true. That needs to be the prayer and the desire of every one of us. Are we walking in the truth is what John is saying here. And he says there, this is how God's love is perfected in you. is because you're keeping the commandments and you're walking in the truth. The word perfected there means complete and mature. It's an ongoing thing. I haven't arrived after 50 years. I'm continuing to pursue the truth. That's why I keep my Bible so close to my life and, and my heart. I ask you, are you keeping the Word of God close to your, to your life and to your heart? Because that's gonna, that's, that is for you to know that you're walking in the truth. God's love is perfected in you. And it's complete and reflects His character. And it says... That we're to walk as Jesus walked. That's a big order. That's a big order. But I'm telling you, the more I love God's commandments and I let the truth come into my heart, I am pursuing walking as He walked. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Before you say, that's just impossible. No, if I'm, if I'm obeying His commandments, 
and I'm loving the truth, that word of perfection, being complete, it's happening in my life, even after 50, well, 51 years, not 50, 51 years, it's happening. I'm walking in the truth because I love the truth. But let's get into some real meat here. Verse 10 talks about the whole issue of hatred of our brother. If we hate our brother, he who says in verse 9 that he's in the light and hates his brother is in darkness unto now. The two things that are manifesting themselves, and God's going to use something good. I'm telling you, God is going to use something good out of all this hate and violence and everything else. Let me tell you one thing I need in my life and you need in your life is a better listening ear. Listen. To listen with not, well, I'm going to wait till you get done talking so I can tell you my response. No, I really need to listen to people who are in pain and hurting. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He who says he's in the light and hates his brother is in darkness unto now. Can Christians hate? Can, can Christians be prejudiced? Absolutely, yes. It's there. But you know what? I'm responsible for me. You're responsible for you. Whether we're hating. Somebody once said, a, a prophet that used to come to our church many years ago, Brother Moore, who's in heaven, he said, Resentment is anger dressed up in diapers. I'm not going to tell you to write that one down, but think about it. Resentment of people is really anger. How we would dress it up. He who is in the light and hates his brother is in darkness unto now. Manifesting. How this stuff's been manifesting, it's been manifesting through hate and through pain. But God is telling us, I want you to rise up and walk in the light and realize that if there's pain and anger and resentment and prejudice in our heart, we're walking in darkness right now, I tell you. We are walking in darkness if there's anything in our heart that we don't love people the same and treat people the same. A listening ear, an emphatic heart to people who are in pain. Well, let's, let me keep going here. If we say we're walking in the light and we're hating our brothers and sisters, we are blind spiritually. We're certainly not following Jesus Christ and his kingdom because we've allowed those things to come into our heart. So the question is, and the question I have for myself, am I blind? Have I lost my way? Because I have a reason. What I'm saying is this, this. God has given us a great opportunity to be healers. And healers start with listening. Healers start with realizing that's not your life experience. That's their life experience. But I can listen. I can develop a friendship. And I can have empathy towards that person. Do you hear what I'm saying? We are not putting any stamp of approval on death and violence and murder and looting and anything else that's been going on. I pray that when they march again, and I've, I've been on Main Street, I've seen all the, the businesses boarded up and stuff, and people are fearful that their, their business is going to be burned down or broken into and stolen. We understand that. If they were coming to our street, you might want to do the same thing to your doors and windows because of we don't want to be violated, but it's, it's coming where the enemy has used this as an opportunity. What is God saying? Arise, shine, discern the darkness around you. Arise, shine, discern the darkness around you. And choose not to hate. And choose not to walk in fear. I refuse to let fear and hate rule my life. The two enemies that are manifesting themselves in our society are fear and hate. And let me, let me just, I wrote this down and I want to say it the right way. I will not be defined by the media. I will not be defined by the color of my skin. I will not be defined by my culture. 
I came from the Midwest, a white boy, and I'm not going to be defined by that even though that's been my past. My definition of who I am is in that Bible that's in your lap of what God has said about me. That's who defines me, not culture. When you've heard the stories when we've gone to Africa, one of the things is, well, you don't understand when you talk about marriage, that's our culture. And then when we hold up the word of God, I said, well, that's your culture and we can respect culture. But what about the word of God, Christian? He who hates his brother is walking in darkness and not in the light. Be careful of everything you hear that it does not define you. God has defined you. Child of the light, not a child of darkness. And I refuse to hate. I choose to love. And I choose to walk in the light. That's what God is saying to the church. Is it okay to march? Absolutely. But we don't condone the violence, and the hatred. Well, you know what was interesting to me, and you've seen it on TV, why did they have pallet loads of bricks ready? And stones and bricks and everything else. This was, this was a plan. I called it the perfect storm. We have a COVID where everybody's fearful of getting a disease, and now we've got hate going on, and people are taking advantage of this. Yes, people can protest. We have a constitution that allows that. But let it be done with peaceful means. Let it not be done with violence. Let it not be done with hate. I refuse to be defined by this world and the media. I refuse to be fearful of disease. I'll respect the situation, honor even what they've asked us to do, the social Everything else, I'll be glad when we can put more chairs in here and we can meet together and we won't have all these different things. Yes. But I refuse to be defined by that. It's not going to rule my life. I refuse to hate and disrespect others. I just refuse to do it. And so should you. We need to understand Satan's tactics now. And what are our weapons? Shine as a child of light, love people, forgive them, and listen and be ready to be a healer. Blessed are the peacemakers. I pray we're a church full of peacemakers. This is here this promise from the Word of God, the book of Daniel. This is you and I. Daniel 11, verses 32. But the people who know their God shall be strong. <laughs> Hallelujah. But the people who know their God shall be strong and they shall carry out great exploits. Does that sound like we should be fearful? No. But the people who know their God shall be strong. We shall be strong and we will carry out great exploits. I refuse to get caught up. I'm aware of it. I pray. But I will not bow to it and I will not be defined by it. God bless that motorcycle. So when that thing wants to rise its head up and you watch something on TV or you be around someone who's experienced pain, pray for them. Refuse to get bow to that spirit of fear and hate, but love and shining as a child of God. Let's stand together. Let's pray together. What a great time to do warfare and to speak blessing over our neighborhood. You know, I was just going to say, why don't you just take a walk around your neighborhood and just declare the kingdom of God would come to that home. Just declare the love of Jesus Christ. That's how we can pray. That's how we can pray and have an influence. I really believe, I want to tell you this, be open to building relationships with people who are against you, don't agree with you. 
and listen. Some people wonder if, we'll, they'll, if we would even listen to their beef or their anger or their rage. And it takes, it takes guts to just sit down and say, you know what, I want to listen. You may not even have the answer, but I tell you what you have is you have a God that you can pray to for them. Amen? Father, as we come at the end of this service this morning, we thank you that we can gather and to worship and the sweet presence of the Holy Spirit has been here. And Lord, I pray that your people will know that they are being equipped with the knowledge that we are to rise and shine. For your light has come and the glory of the Lord has arisen upon us as your people. God, I pray and we just declare, Lord, to this city right now, Lake Elsinore, be at peace. Be at peace, Lake Elsinore. We take authority over every spirit of hate and violence now. Come on. We take authority over every spirit of hate and violence now. We take authority over that. You will not rule over this city. You will not rule over men and women and boys and girls. You will not rule over them anymore. Because we loose the light that's going to chase out the darkness now. We bind every spirit, every spirit and every plot of the enemy, every plan. Every plan for violence, every plan for hate, every plan for destruction. We bind those spirits now. In the name of Jesus, we loose you now and tell you you have no authority over this city, over the men and women and the boys and girls in Lake Elsinore and Canyon Lake and Wildemar and Temecula and all these places. In the name of Jesus, we render you powerless. In the name of Jesus. Come on, church. We render you powerless. Every demonic spirit, we render you powerless. And we say, Lord, we just loose salvation now. We lose salvation now. The prodigal sons and daughters need to come home. Lord, we just call them home by faith in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, begin to do a work in our city, in our valley now, in Jesus' name. Oh God, we pray protection over every man and woman, every boy and girl. We pray protection over our police uh, force and our fire department and our leaders in this city now, in Jesus' name. They would be protected and they would have wisdom and they would, God, have hearts to listen. And God, there would be peace over this whole city now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Father, we pray for our neighbors who live around us, who we work with. We are praying for their salvation now. We're praying that our neighbors, our friends, our family, those that we work with, those that, we, that are in the restaurants and in the banks and the all the places we go to, we're praying salvation now. We're just saying, let the light come now. Let the light of Jesus come in. Fill me with light, Lord. Then when they walk in, they don't know why they're attracted. It says that the Gentiles would be attracted to Israel. God may sinners be attracted to us because of love and light. Church, did you hear that? May sinners be attracted to us because of our love and the light and the compassion and a hearing friendly, loving ear. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We pray for our president, our vice president. We pray for Congress. Lord, we pray that the fear of the Lord would come upon them and they would want what God wants more than they want politics. We are praying for their salvation. We're praying for their protection. We're praying, God, that, Lord, that you will manifest those who have an agenda for you and those that have an agenda for darkness and let the people see the difference. Did you hear that, church? May people see the difference between those who have the right agenda for God and America and those for politics and destruction and control. In the name of Jesus, now, Lord. In Jesus' name now. So put a filter on your ears of what you hear and see in the media the things you're hearing, put it through the filter of the Word of God and not allow your heart to become hard and hateful, but blessing and praying and loving and having empathy, compassion for even those that are caught up with sin. And Jesus said from the cross, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Sin deceives people. And our hearts should be, hate to see what sin does to people to destruction. 
and the death. What a great opportunity. I'm going to release you now. But what a great opportunity for us to arise and shine for thy light has come. Hallelujah. Give Jesus a hand. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name. God bless you. We'll see you Tuesday night. If you're able to watch, be faithful in giving. Continue praying. And uh, let's pray that this thing, whole thing ends soon. God bless you. This isn't easy for me to end.